Hospital Porter's pride and dignity. Stop the New World Order. Welcome to her Panwo TV. And I'd like to begin I'd like to begin this video by saying, first of all, I think women should be banned from ufology. That's the end of the video. Goodbye. Actually, of course, that's not the end of the video at all. And I don't actually mean what I just said. It's I'm just ha I'm making an ironic joke. Because I have a feeling there are certain people, probably people behind uh, my block, the event horizon of my block list, who are going to read the title of this video. They may even clip the little bit you just heard, and they're going to misrepresent me with what this video is all about. And they're going to make out I'm something I'm not, deliberately lying. So, what I just said was kind of an ironic joke. So, that for those of you who are still watching, well done, because of course if you do watch this video and you listen honestly you'll find that um, I'm actually a, quite a different kind of person to that, to the way I'm being portrayed by my enemies. In fact that goes for other things that have happened to me in the past as well, uh, other subjects which you may be familiar with. And so those of you who wish to give me an honest hearing, um, please watch on. Obviously say what you think in the comments section and I hope you will be uh, I hope when you make comments on this video those comments will be intellectually honest um, and respectful because you see I know that what I'm about to talk about here is very controversial I know I will lose friends by making this video probably not that many actually because I, I'm not actually going to talk about anything in this video that I've not spoken about before on other videos this is kind of a. Um, this is kind. Of, I will. Be, I will bring a few new subjects in, but basically, this will be a kind of. This will be one of these kind of points of references that I make occasionally, if so that when next time a subject comes up, I can say, right here you are, and I just give them one link, because you see this subject did come up recently. And um, I wanted to give people a point of reference, as you know, if you watched uh, the Basis Project conference I did. And I referred them to two previous videos I'd made. I said, that, go to uh, one video and it's about, about 40 minutes in, go to another one it's like two hours in, and things like that. I don't think that's very satisfactory. I think there needs to be a single point of reference for this very controversial, but I think very important subject that I'm going to talk about now. And so that's why I did what I did. That's why I'm making this video right now. And the reason I'm making it, I suppose, I suppose because of everything that's happened to me, everything what's what happened to Gareth, rather, in the last couple of weeks, has led me to, to feel rather rueful. And it's put me in a kind of mood where I want to talk about this, I think. Because, and I think what... What really triggered, if to use that term, if, if that's not a bit of a pun, what triggered this particular reaction in me, I think was the basis project. Now, I refer to an incident in, in, in the video, in the re video reportage I make, I refer to an incident where somebody at the conference says something on the subject of uh, women in ufology, or rather, that's kind of like a buzzword, which is why I put it in quotes. What I mean is, basically the presence of women within the UFO Paracon community and the fact that they are smaller in number than the men in our community. They are outnumbered by the men. And um, what they said, I think, really upset me. And I, 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 try, I think I brushed, even, even, in the, even in the reportage that I made, the Basis Project reportage, when I watch it back to myself, when I watch it back, I can kind of sense... I think I kind of sense that I'm trying to brush it off. I'm trying to brush it under the carpet. 
when in fact it upset me an awful lot more than I even admitted back then. That's kind of the situation we're in with that. And maybe I shouldn't have. And I think because of the way I'm feeling now, I, I realise that when I, when I look back at myself just a few weeks ago and the way I reacted to that. As I said, I, I said I couldn't, I, I didn't go into details, but I said I can't bear it that this person believes that I'm part of a problem. Not because of who I am, but because of what I am. And yes, I can't bear it. What's sad is that this is, this is a person quite new to the UFO Paracon Truth Movement who has seen through, and recently in her life, has seen through an awful lot of the, the veil of lies that are pulled over, pulled over us, our minds, to prevent us from seeing the truth. Yet she hasn't seen through this. She still believes this. She still has not assimilated the lies in this particular subject. And I hope she will. If she's watching, I hope you will. Um, you know who you are. It did upset me. Now, um, see, this this idea has come up before. I mean, it's, it came up several times. It's most famously in my debate on Planet X Radio with Paula Leopici Harris, uh, which actually was quite good. I mean, we I think it was very civilized, and Paula and I are still on good terms. We we were we we haven't fallen out over it, but I completely disagreed with her on this. You see. This is this idea that when you when you look through the world of ufology, you might find a hashtag all male panel, or even a, um, a panel which is like mostly men, and then the cry always goes out. Yet something must be done here because something's gone wrong. If there's more men than women, obviously there's there's a problem here. And Paula actually said this. Um, she 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 got the feeling she actually became annoyed with the fact that so many conferences will not ring fence some of the speakers for females only. It's a sort of women only shortlist thing. Um, and you get this phrase, you, there's this little catchphrase that comes out. Dominated by men, or usually dominated by white men. Um, it could refer to the UFO Paracon subject, or it could refer to a computer games fans, or um, a university department. I mean, um, Sargon of Akkad has talked a lot about Gamergate, for example. And there's always this pejorative sense, this term, dominated by men, as if, again, something's gone wrong here, something needs to be fixed, there's obviously, some, there's obviously a spanner in the works that needs to be sorted out. And Paula Harris, I think, I think she crossed the line and really she says, I was actually one of the hosts, it wasn't really my role to get into a debate with her, but she crossed the line and made me want to challenge her because she said to herself, it's been a struggle, it's not been easy. And I said, what do you mean? She says, I went to a UFO conference and I was one of only eight women that were there. And I thought, okay, so what's the nature of this struggle, Paula, you're talking about? Um, it's, Paula Harris is very widely respected. She's one of the most successful people in this field. Wherever I go, people speak very highly of her. She, I've been to three conferences where she has also been, and she's been treated as an, treated as an honoured guest. She's been afforded every courtesy. Um, so when she says, it's been a struggle, it's not been easy, I have to say, well, okay, well, Paula, I think I'm within my rights to say, Paula, could you explain more exactly what the nature of this struggle is? And the answer you get when you, you corner... Um, well, Paula claims she's not a feminist, but women influenced by feminism, which is more than actually claim are feminists, they'll say, it's almost as if they'll, they'll say, well, it's still a struggle to be a woman in this situation. It says, well, is there any situation where being a woman is not a struggle? Because it, it feels, this is what's known as, this is what I call the UVFN, the Universal Female Victimhood Narrative, which is a, at the core of feminism. And it says that being a woman is a, involves suffering. The very act of simply being a female human being is in itself painful and arduous. 
regardless of any circumstances at all that is the way it is and of course then you get onto the um you get onto what uh, Douglas Murray calls the victimhood olympics where if if they're black women and they're up on the silver medal podium if you're a woman you're just on the bronze but you get onto the silver medal podium if you're a, a black woman if you're a lesbian you're on the gold medal podium because you've got sexual orientation race and gender all intersecting together into this um, into this uh, men this glory this achievement of, of oppression and, and they do I mean they, they, they have a, the, the left wingers have a very strange relationship with um, oppression they they claim they're against it I and mean, they, they there's always anti this they're anti that anti racist anti sexist so so and so against racism against sexism but at the same time they glorify it and they whenever they experience it they attach it they wear it on their sleeves as a badge of pride and honor it's almost like a kind of it's a strange paradoxical thing it really is that it becomes a part of their identity their their oppression even in a strange way their self-esteem it's rather like what I've noticed I've talked before about um, about the so-called Celtic countries yes Hugo Rune I know um, where they say things like um, the bloody English, I, I, I don't need to go into that, but basically I've seen the same thing where um, the sense of being hard done by it switches from being something negative almost into being something positive, something you want to lord and champion and, and, and yes, maintain. I have to ask Paula Harris and, and anyone who agrees with her, you know, when you say if you're a woman and you find it's been a struggle and it's not been easy simply being in ufology or the UFO Paracon circuit community, is that true? Is that simply what you're meant to think? Is that what they want you to think, to coin a phrase? Because, um, I mean, this touches this, uh, this, I think, trans, this intersects, to use that term, <laughs> that um, intersects with my general criticism of feminism. Because, make no mistake, I mean, feminism is a part of cultural Marxism. It's, it's something invented by a group of people who, by their own admission, for their own, what they say themselves, they want to take over the world by controlling people's minds. And part of this is to take women and turn them into weapons against civilization. That's what it is. Not a popular idea, I know. Not, a lot of you won't like me saying that, but it's, I think it's true. Um... And you actually, if you read the, the things they've written and listen, listen to the things they say, you know, the Frankfurt School, Common Purpose, the Tavistock Institute, and as you know, I have, um, I have an unhealthily intimate relationship with that organization and one of the people within it. Um, that is basically what they say. They say we need to control people's minds. We need to control the way people think and feel so we can take over the world and run it the way we want to, turn it into what we want it to. Um, so, I think this this the delusion of the UVFN and how it applies everywhere. But into the, the person I'm talking about, the person, the basis project. Um, I think they they have this idea in their head that there's some kind of there's some kind of cabal of cackling, hand-rubbing white males who sit in a circle thinking, you know, how are we going to keep these bloody women out of our boys' club? How are we going to do it, guys? I, do they really believe that actually happens? Do they really believe that exists? You see, I've, as I, I'm, a, I'm a white male in ufology, and which is, so I spend most of my time with other white men, and I've been in situations where, I'm, where I'm, I am in private with a more than a dozen or so fellow white men. And we're perhaps in the middle of the countryside, or we're in a in a home alone, and no one can overhear us. And I tell you what, never ever have I heard any anyone ever say that. Even when they were in, when you know we're all together, these these evil white male cabal all sitting together, and no one can hear. Come on, guys, we don't have to keep up the pretense anymore, right? How are we going to keep these bloody women out of this our, our boys' club, our male-dominated uh, male circle, our, and, and things like that? It's never happened. I swear to you, it's never happened. If it did, I would, I would oppose it. Although, you know, I'm always... Um, the problem is, like, I'm always... 
I'm always, you see, in a sense, I think the, the, the correct sentiments I should be feeling in this situation have kind of been beaten out of me because I know that those sentiments within me will be weaponized against me. So I, I, tend, to, I tend to even hold back thinking these right thoughts. Um, and now what you'll get is, now the answer you'll get inevitably with that is, um, yes, and that may be true, but you see, this the misogyny you feel is, it, it's tacit. It's subconscious. It's a dog whistle and things like that. And then the term dog whistle you'll often hear from the left. They, they, it means when someone says something but they really mean something else. So if I say, for example, the rain in Spain rains mainly on the plain. I could be reciting a line from a song in Pygmalion. Or I could be, see, I don't really mean that, you see. I don't really mean that. What I'm really saying is the rain in Spain refers to migrants and rains mainly on the plain is actually um, uh, it, it's code I'm, I'm using a dog whistle it's code that means attacking migrants as they cross the, the Mediterranean Sea in their boats that's what it really means and is it, you can immediately you immediately know what the problem is right the, the problem is that this, the dog whistle hypothesis is unfalsifiable the dog whistle hypothesis literally means anything you want it to mean the meaning behind the dog whistle is in the imagination of the beholder. And so if, you, if you're accused of dog whistling, you can never defend yourself. It's impossible. Um, it's, it's one of these strange things. It's like um, Stephen Molyneux did this video where he talked about, um, he talked about the, the non-existent door. Like You go up and you see a, a doorway and there's no door there. Um, you walk up to it and you go through it and you say, hang on, there's no door there. But someone comes up to you and they say, but, but listen, Stefan, there is a door there. It's a tacit door. It's an implicit door. It's a subconscious door. And Stefan goes around and he says, hang on a minute. There's, there's no door there. Look, there's no door. Oh, but it's there, but you can't see it. What do you mean I can't see it? <laughs> is it? Is there a door there or not? Well, you can't see it because you're not a dedicated anti-dorist who, who has... Who has trained themselves, and they've gone to anti, they've gone to anti Dora study classes at university, which has trained them to spot anti Dorism everywhere. You don't understand because you are a privileged Doriarch. So stop door explaining to me and just accept my hypothesis. Listen to my lived experience. My lived experience as an as an anti Dorist is that there is a door there, and you, as a as a privileged Doriarch, could never understand that. So there is a door there. Q E and F and D. And I think that's the attitude that, that I find when I, whenever I try to challenge people on this point. What will happen is I'll get I'll, this happened actually back. It was one. It was in the uh, one of the UFO Truth magazine conference. Someone said, "Well, all the speakers are men. Look at it. All I said, well, look, all the speakers are men, apart from Suzanne Hansen, and she looked very lonely up there." I said again, "Look, I lonely." This person was saying that Suzanne Hansen looked lonely. <laughs> Susan never complained to being lonely, I don't think, but, um, it, you know, I'd say, well, why? In what way? Is she, she lonely? You know, she's been afforded every courtesy she's been afforded. We, we've, she's been treated as an honoured guest. And they'll say, well, so what's the problem? Misogyny is the problem. I says, OK, how do you know there's misogyny? And she'll show me this. She showed me the speaker's list. Look, 90% men. There's the misogyny. I thought, that's not misogyny. That's a fact. You're stating a fact, which is that, that men outnumber women in ufology. That's the fact. You're assuming a cause for that fact, which is misogyny. And as I said before, this is what they want you to think. Have you... It's, it's the UVFN. It's the assumption that it has to be misogyny whenever this happens. Ha misogyny meaning hatred of women. It's instantly, It's a very, very serious accusation to accuse either one, um, a single person or a group of people of misogyny. And it, it's, a, it's an accusation that toss, it's tossed around very casually in our society, and it shouldn't be. Um, so th that's the fact. What's the cause of the fact? That's the thing. What's the cause? And um, see, maybe if it, this is where we have never. This is an area I've never gone into face to face with people and maybe I should but the, actually, oh, actually I did once actually I did bring this up once with someone the cause is simply human biodiversity it's simply human biodiversity it is um, 
It's the fact that people, people, um, we also have the word people are equal in our society. That's the phrase you often get. And indeed, we are equal under the law, and that's a good thing. It's been it's been difficult to get equality under the law um, for for people over the years. Not just uh, people of different colours and women, but people of different classes as well have had to fight for their rights for equality under the law. Um, which is that's being undone now, incidentally, and not the way that the uh, the wokeists think it is. But. Uh, I think when people say this, they assume that means everyone's going to be absolutely identical. Everybody, when we, when you have this equality, equality is a very Orwellian word, incidentally. It's extremely Orwellian. Uh, yes, everyone's equal, but some people are more equal than others. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's that sort of thing. Um, but the idea is that this, this, this Orwellian pot of gold at the end of the rainbow called equality... Which no one can ever actually define. No one can actually say. I, I, I like to ask these people, how do you know when you've reached equality? Will a buzzer go off somewhere? Will church bells ring? I mean, how, how will you know when you've reached equality? And they say, oh, we'll just know it. We'll just know it. There is no specific definition of equality. I mean, the closest you'll get to an actual specific uh, outline from these people will know it when, when, for example, you look at a speaker's list like this and it's 50% men and 50% women. So in other words, equality is all of us being cardboard cutouts of everyone else. All of us, all of us reduced to components in a political dynamic. That's what equality is. Equality is where we're all equal, which means we're all the same. That's what it means. Well, firstly, I don't think that's desirable. I think that's uh, that would be a very unpleasant kind of society. Because you have to force it, you see. You, you can't. If you leave people to their own devices, they won't. You won't get equality because people are not equal in that sense. Equal being, when I say equal, I'm not. It's not. A, it's not actually. A, when I say equal, it's not worth. It's not a, a value of the person. It's the uh, the nature of themselves. That's what I mean by equal. Um, I, I believe that yeah. When it comes to the value of the person, yes, people are equal. But people are not equal in terms of their nature. Um, which means when you take men and women, something very interesting happens. If you take 10 men and 10 women and ask them what they think about UFOs, you'll pr you probably will get an equal number of them who, with, who have an interest or disinterest or non-interest or rejection of that particular subject. But if you take a million men and a million women, you will find that interest in UFOs will be far higher in the male half, far higher. The, the, the reason for this is not it's not social programming. That's why little girls play with dolls and little boys play with cars. It's, it's all social programming, it's conditioning. No, it's our essential nature, it's biology. It's the fact that men and women do gravitate towards different interests when you generalize across an entire population. Boys, this is why boys play with cars and girls play with dolls, incidentally. Um, it's, it's just, it's the way we are. It's, it's to do with the way our brains are built. We, we, you know, we have different hormones inside us, which um, leads us to have different thoughts and feelings. Which is why, in, in universities, more men will go for sciences, more the women will go for the humanities. Psychology is favoured by women, whereas engineering is favoured by men. It does nothing. Doesn't mean anything has gone wrong. It's just the way we are, and you can't change that. But in the effort to change it, any attempt made to change that would be incredibly destructive, and it has been. We've seen this in the, the aforementioned universities and other institutions where they they have brought in quotas to engineer forced forced equality of outcome, not just equal opportunities, but forced equality of outcome. Because if if you give people equal equal opportunities, you won't get a, you won't get equality of outcome. Because for the reasons I've said, men and women will gravitate towards different interests, and you'll suddenly find that you do get more men here and more women there. So you have to engineer it. You have to essentially take these people and crowbar them into social roles that they wouldn't fall into naturally. That is, it, that is social vandalism. And I will do everything I can to prevent that happening in ufology. Believe me, I will do everything I can. Um... When I said, you know, when you say men and women gravitate towards different interests, there are, of course, exceptions. Paula Harris is an exception. Erica Lukes, um, people like that, um, they're all exceptions. 
But being an exception does not make you a victim. It doesn't mean you are oppressed and discriminated against. This is again the UVFN, cultural Marxist mind control, tells you the, the, through the UVFN that women are. But they're not. I can tell you why. You can see it immediately when you realise that it doesn't cut both ways. I, along with being interested in UFOs, I'm also interested in, I'm also interested in spiritualism. And um, spiritualism is dominated by women. Or I, I would just say dominate by women. Yes, it is. Most mediums are female. Most people with interest in spiritualism are women. I think they far outnumber men, probably four or five to one. But I'm not oppressed. I'm not a victim as a result of that. I've never experienced sexism, and sexism is what it is, in, in spiritualism. Never. I'm not oppressed. I'm not discriminated against. And the reason is because I'm a white male, I don't have this UVFN. I don't have this, pr this continuous programming me telling me I'm a victim and telling me I'm oppressed. In fact, it says the opposite. They say I'm, a, I'm an evil oppressor. I'm a, I'm a privileged oppressor. And again, it's, it's equally unfalsifiable, it's equally universal, and as with female oppression, there's no escape. Whatever you do, wherever you go, you are who you are. Martin Luther King said, I have a dream that my four little children one day will be judged by the content of their character, not the colour of their skins. Today's left says, Martin Luther King, you are cancelled. A person, absolutely a person, should be judged by the colour of their skin. Or by their... Their sex, their genitalia, their reproduction, reproductive function, whatever else it is. Um, the you see, there are inequalities. These inequalities that, that emerge when everyone is left to their own devices are natural, harmless inequalities because nobody is held back by them. I assert that nobody is that they they are benign because nobody is stopped doing what they want to do. No one ever goes up to you and says, you can't do this because you are so-and-so. The only people who are actually in, in, in ufology, or, or anywhere actually, who are going up to people and saying, you can't do so-and-so because of who, what you are, are those, it's basically, they're saying this to white men. This person at the Basis Project said this, basically, they, they said they want a, a cap on the number of white male speakers they have. This person is essentially saying that I'm part of a problem because of what I am. Oh dear, I didn't, and maybe I should have, maybe I should have spoken out, maybe I should have said something. And I didn't. Maybe I'd have felt better if I had done that. I don't know. But I didn't say anything, because I think this, there's going to be, I hope this video will be the, will be a herald of an organised resistance to this sort of thing. I know that's what I want, along with being a single point of reference, that's what I want this video to be. If you feel as I feel, if you think as I think, as V said, you know, this is the video for you. Um, funnily enough, I mean, I'll, I'll, I've never ever spoken about this, not even on the HPWA blog. But, you know, I, I actually have been subjected to sexism, I believe, in the delivery suite when I was a porter. I spent nine years as a delivery suite porter, which is, I was basically the only man in there. And yeah, I was treated, I was mistreated for being a man by the female staff. I was, I was subjected to sexism by women who, are, who believe and are, are encouraged to believe that it's absolutely all right for them to behave that way. That there, it's, there's basically an open season on white men and they can treat me any way they like, even though they would abhor themselves being treated in the same way. The presence of the double standard is like, is completely, they're completely oblivious to the presence of that double standard. I Maybe I should say something about it. You know, the reason I haven't written about it is I think it's still too painful to talk about. But obviously it has been very formative to me. And it's probably a good job it happened because I wouldn't be making this video now maybe if I hadn't. If it hadn't. So I've got loads of notes here. <laughs> Uh, another example of um, all right is another example of a harmless natural inequality. Um, I used to play basketball at school, and well, I wasn't the only white man on the team, but I I think I was a minority for most of my time when I only played for like two years, but uh, with the team. But I mean, I was I think I was I think I was probably the uh, in a minority being white. 
there was never any problem there. The, I got on well with the other rest of the team. And the thing is, that was a school, that was just an amateur school team. But if you, if you get up to the professional leagues, you'll find there is a distinct blackness about them. And the reason for this is that black people do seem to have a natural, a natural ability, a natural... They seem to be naturally suited for playing basketball for whatever reason, maybe muscle mass or something like that. Um, but they, they do seem to be better at basketball generally than white men. Um, if I was a coach of a basketball team, I'd be quite happy having an all-black team because they'd be more likely to win. Um, no one ever goes up to these, these teams and say, you know, you need a bit of balance on this team. Sign up some white guys, for goodness sake. It's all so black there. You never hear that. It's, and that's because I think because people understand harmless inequalities. They understand harmless that most people understand that very harmless natural inequalities that I'm talking about in this video. They just don't think it applies here. It only applies here, and it doesn't apply there. And this is uh, this is a big problem I have with the left in politics. They keep taking, they keep doing this. They keep taking these absolutely identical ethical equations and making out that one is good and the other is bad. You know, I, it's, it's, oh, how, I couldn't even begin to give you examples. I couldn't even begin, but one is the one I've just basically given you one, haven't I, with bas you know, compare basketball to a science department at a university. Um, so what you'll find is that the people who are in favour of what we're talking about here, they tend to say things like, we need balance. That the word that I keep hearing all the time is balance. I've heard this from Paula. I've heard this from the person at the Basis Project, who I won't name. She's watching. She knows who she is. Balance. Balance. But what they want to do is force a balance. They want to force a balance. They want to cap on men. They want fewer men, which means they have to ban men. They have to ban white people. They have to say they have to say to people look you we can't have you as a speaker at this conference because you are a white male because of what you are you're part of the problem we have to have mostly women speakers you're out because of what you are um it's and they they all say well what are you going to do about it ben what are you going to do about it then? If you don't, if you don't think we should force a balance, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do to fix this? And I says, I'm not going to do anything to fix it because nothing's wrong. This isn't. This is the way it should be. This is an organic society we have here. I'm not going to start putting chemicals into it. Basically, uh, another phrase you you now. This is where I come on to Ryan Sprague. Now, I. Ryan Sprague is a bit like me. He's a, he's really into UFOs and he has a YouTube channel and a radio show and things like that. And um, he is one of these people who is who is pro women in ufology, quote unquote. And he always brings this subject up. I'm, it's a sad because I, I like him. I like his show. He's, he, his show, Somewhere in the Skies, is very good. Yet every so often he'll do that. He'll do this. He had someone on. I can't remember who it was. But he had someone on a few weeks ago, and um, he and he complains. You know, she, he said, "What's it like being a woman in ufology?" He says, "What's it like? What's it like not having your voice heard because you're a woman?" And <laughs> again, that's a catchphrase. Isn't it? Women's voice is not being heard. Oh yeah, and then and then amazingly, as an example, guess who he brings up? He gives he he well, he provides, says let me think of someone else who's let me think of another woman who's been in this situation. I know Linda Moulton Howe. <coughs> he brings up Linda Moulton Howe as a woman whose voice has not been heard. Is there, is there anyone out there who's not heard Linda Moulton Howe's voice? Now the thing about it is, like um, I know Linda today is a much more divisive character than she used to be. Um, I actually, I think I have a higher, I have a higher opinion of Linda than most people. Actually, I think she's, I still, I still respect her. I still like what she does. I like her show. Um, she's, I think she sometimes goes too far down very speculative leads, but I think generally speaking, she's very good. But when she, believe when she first came out, she's been doing this a long time. I mean, she started in the seventies in, into UFOs, and believe me, when, when she first started speaking out, everybody listened to her. She was extremely influential, and she deserved to be. 
because what she did on cattle mutilation has become a definitive foundation of everything that's come since in that particular field of study. The idea that Linda Moulton Howe was ignored for being a woman, it's, it's insulting to men and it's, frankly it's insulting to her. Linda Moulton Howe is isn't, isn't never ignored. If Linda Moulton Howe is ignored it's not because she's a woman. And she's not ignored by many people. Probably, and certainly when she first started out, she wasn't ignored. Um, there's other examples. I mean, I could give you other examples. Of course, uh, who can forget the uh, the four horsewomen of Randolston Forest? You know? Who can forget them? Butler Street, Randall Bruni. Who can forget? I mean, I, I, I still... I, I know uh, uh, Brenda Butler and Dot Street. I actually know, and they, they're great ladies. They're brilliant ladies. Who could possibly, you know, were, were their voices not heard? They broke the story along with Larry Warren. They broke the story of the, one of the, probably one of the, or not, if not the biggest UFO case of all time. You see, oh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's sad that people think this. Now, putting myself in their shoes, or trying to anyway, I will try and <clears throat> a non wokest explain to them. That's what non woke explaining. <laughs> I just, if you are non woke you should be silent and listen to the lived experience of wokists. All right, I'll be silent. Mm. Stop being silent. Non woke silence is violence. Oh, hang on. Oh, God, I've had enough of this. I'm going away. Oh, haven't you got a lot of non woke fragility? Oh, shut up. You can't, you can't get into discussions with these things. But you see, they, this. This this is all this is again is part of this cultural Marxist um, mind warping, but they believe that they can, you know, what's the solution to racism? It's more racism. What's the solution to what's the solution to sexism? It's more sexism. If if black people are oppressed, let's oppress let's oppress white people. It doesn't matter how extreme it goes. In South Africa right now, there's a genocide going on, and the world is not looking at it. The world doesn't give a damn because of this, because of this, this open season theory. Same with with uh, this other thing. Let's just be as cruel as possible to white men, and and if we do that for long enough, eventually we'll hit you know we'll hit that buzz. They will hit that mark. We'll cross that finish line, and we will have equality. And it doesn't work. I mean, you cannot fight injustice by trying to cancel it out with another injustice. All you'll get is a double dose of injustice, and that is even when it's a real injustice. In this case, we're not dealing with a real injustice. We're dealing with a, with a, a cultural Marxist unicorn, a, a fantasy. Um, see, if I and I, I know what people are going to say in the comments right now. I know what they're going to say. Well, the, I think the the real the only real problem I, I'm going to have with people watching this video are the the people who are going to misrepresent me are the ones who will do so anyway and lie about it. I don't think anyone who is intellectually honest will watch this video and say Ben's a misogynist, Ben's a sexist, Ben's an evilist, Ben's a racist, Ben's a thisist, Ben's a thatist, Ben's a f uh, something a phobe and that a phobe and everything a phobe. I don't think anyone who is intellectually honest who watch this is, watches this video and listens to the points I make will think that. I mean I could direct you, I mean this is a bit of a shameless plug, but why don't I direct you to my novel? the second novel of the, of the Roswell trilogy, Roswell Revealed, The World After Disclosure. The, the protagonist of, of that story is a very, is a strong, charismatic female character called Siobhan Quilly. Now, if I was a misogynist, I wouldn't have, in, I wouldn't have included that character in the novel, would I? I have a feeling this is not going to go away easily, this situation. I've got a feeling I'm going to have to come back to it at some point. But the good news is, if I do come back to it now, I have a point of reference. When this, whenever this comes up again in discussion, I can say, there you go, there's my video, Women in Ufology, watch that. I'll just, just show them, I'll just show them that video. I don't have to go around explaining things and saying, okay, watch this little segment of, of my reportage there, and watch this little segment of my reportage here, and things like that. I have one, it's a one-stop shop for, an, for a comprehensive answer. And that's why I'm making this video. So, for those of you who want to bear with me on this, thank you very much. I appreciate that. For those of you who, po who, uh, who don't like what I've just said, well, 
you're going to face an organized resistance to this, I swear, I will. This is going to be like, this is going to be the ufological equivalent of Gamergate, I think, if you carry on with what you're doing. Because we're going to fight back, there's going to be a, there's going to be a, rebe re a rebellion and I'm going to be one of the leaders of it. So get used to that. In the meantime, thank you all of you for watching Hapanwo TV. Hospital porters, pride and dignity, stop the new world order. Free ourselves! 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 Free